it's daytime a daytime review um it's a sunday afternoon i've I, I snuck off to this i didn't sneak off to the cinema i'm 42 i can do what i like um but i i took myself off to the cinema this afternoon and i am still reeling from what i just saw um this afternoon's film was the directorial debut of one mr dev patel um the film is called monkey man and i didn't know a huge amount about it but just the fact that it was uh directed by and starring dev patel and produced by jordan peele was enough to pique my interest so i actually don't even know if i've seen a trailer for this um or if i had seen a trailer prior to coming today um i have been a fan of dev patel's for a very long time for most people or for a lot of people um they will always associate him with skins now i am well aware he was in skins however i never watched it uh, amusingly at the time it was on that particularly that first series i thought it was kind of i was too old for it or rather i didn't feel like i was the target audience for that sort of drama about young people however when that was on i was probably in like my early to mid 20s now at 42 i've got all the love for things like heartstopper and sex education which definitely aren't aimed at me but at the time skins just wasn't something that i was into but i was aware of it and i was aware of the cast obviously um alongside dev patel and um, nicholas holt came to prominence in skins um and various other actors so yeah i don't know what it was that i first saw him in um he's also known for roles and things like um slumdog millionaire he's in um hotel mumbai um he is in lion which i haven't seen and he actually popped up in aaron sorkin's the newsroom which i'm a huge fan of it only had three seasons but he's quite um a mate, one of the main characters in that and i remember when i first started watching the newsroom being absolutely tickled that here was dev patel you know british lad um playing a, a british and in an indian british character in um something that aaron sorkin had made and he's really good in it so i've always had a lot of time for the guy and then a few years ago he starred in the personal history of david copperfield in the title role and he was absolutely wonderful in that he's really he's got a real charm about him and a sort of i don't know how to put it like a quiet charisma he's obviously done these really versatile roles and and i just look at him and think good lad not that he's seeking my approval for anything he does but anything i've ever seen him and he's always been really good no matter whether it's you know intense drama whether it's a tv show just um in slumdog millionaire he's so appealing and just you root for him all the way through so i've got a whole lot of time for dev patel and like i say i saw the poster i saw directed by and i thought oh that's interesting he's directed a film he also co-wrote it to be quite i don't know basic about it monkey man is a revenge thriller i guess that's the category you'd put it in or a sort of vengeance movie a one-man army type vibe he plays a character who actually whose name we never learn he's living in an undisclosed city in india they don't actually say where they are but it's a place and i'm sure this is quite common um where there is a real divide between um wealth and poverty so you've got high rises and money and drugs and sex work and glitz and glamour and then you've got slums and there's this real divide and he is living obviously in quite a, an impoverished life um you don't know much about him other than he takes part in sort of underground boxing for money and um, wearing a monkey mask and he has a vendetta against the chief of police 
And we learn through flashbacks that when he was a child, he was grown up with his, just his mother. We see her in flashbacks. Um, we learn that he, um, the, the land that they lived on, they lived peacefully, his community, everything he'd ever known. And when he's maybe sort of, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out how old the kid version of him looks, about eight or ten years old, the police turn up, say that it's holy ground, it no longer, it doesn't belong to them, and their village is burned to the ground. So he wants revenge. And you can see all the ways that if this was a Western film or if it was an American made film, how badly this could be handled. But because it's set in India and because it's Dev Patel and because it's stylish and well thought out, it has so much more impact. Like I as a general rule, I would say I wouldn't go in for a revenge thriller. Apparently, people are going to compare this to John Wick. I've never seen any of the John Wick films. My ex, I spoke to him about it because he'd been to see it and he compared it to Ong Bak, which I know of, but again, I've never seen because it's not like I'm the sort of cinema goer who's just like, I only like romantic comedies. That's not me at all. But I'm not going to go out of my way to see a really violent revenge thriller because as a general rule, they're not my vibe. But I went along to this one and my God, it's violent. It's an 18th certificate. Um, apparently, um, there was talk of it being cut to get a 15th certificate. As I understand it, it was his project. The story is Dev Patel's. Like I say, he co wrote the screenplay, he directed it. Apparently, the film was shut down due to COVID. The film was eventually finished and it was supposed to be a Netflix film. And apparently, they wanted to cut it and he said no. He was really passionate that it'd stay you know intact that it was he, he was happy with the film as it was and it looked like it wasn't going to find an audience and then apparently so i'm told um the producer writer director jordan peele the man who's responsible for things like um get out and us and other things his um monkey paw productions his production house he, apparently he saw the film said i'll you know i'll, I'll put my name on it I can help you find uh, somebody to release it and don't do a thing to it, it's perfect. And it is perfect. Like the violence is entirely justified and it fits in with the story, but it really doesn't hold back. There is a very high body count and you see people die horribly. It's not cartoony. The music that's used again, it's, it uses a lot of sort of an Indian type soundtrack. And then there are heavier moments, but even during the big fight sequences towards the end when the sort of revenge plot is being executed and I'm not spoiling anything there it's a revenge thriller so it's all building up to is he going to get the bad guy or not um or bad guys even during some of those sequences I'm watching them thinking if this was a Hollywood film this would be so much more cheesy and it's it's not it's raw and it's brutal and you feel his like rage and because you've seen the flashbacks, because you've seen him as a child with his mother, you feel that rage and you, I don't know, rightly or wrongly, you want to see that violence um, carried out because these are bad people and these are bad people in places of power. So it's not just the chief of police, it's the politicians. It's all building up to an election um, on the night of Div the Diwali festival. So it's two hours and it's relentless and it's brutal and it's a hard watch. And I did, I'm not particularly squeamish, but I did have to like turn my head away a few times because I was just really taken aback by how graphic it was. But again, it served the story. It wasn't violence for the sake of violence. It was violence to tell a very dark and I'm gonna say brutal again. It was to tell a, a dark, violent, brutal story. And it told it exceptionally well. If he's going to direct more, I'm excited to see what else he does. But he is absolutely outstanding in this. Low key, hard as nails, just uh, honestly, superb, absolutely superb. I wouldn't rush to see it again. I don't know if I've mentioned, it's quite violent. But good God, I'm glad I've seen it. And like hats off, what, like, what a talent, what an absolute belter of a debut film. I'm going to go now before my car blows away. Katie out.